aqui? Hã? All right, so that word in the Greek, prophete uo, prophete uo, prophete uo, to foretell events or to have divine speech under inspiration. So in essence, this prophete uo seems to talk about foretelling and foretelling, but the key point is it's by divine power. The point is, I'm, chapter one, I'm waiting on, this is going to make sense in a minute, chapter one, I'm waiting on this power. And remember, I'm waiting on this power because of faith, because of hope, because of love, and the love part I thought was really interesting. Because the love part said, love is believing in and acting upon what God said, but for the benefit of another. And we said that benefit was going to be a benefit to Jesus and a benefit to others, non-believers, right? So, I got to get some power in my tongue because... If I'm going to be a witness of Jesus, that means that I have to have the, the, the other languages were about speaking to people in their own languages. But there was something that was even deeper than that. And that was this prophet to you, which means a power that will give me boldness to say things that I, that I don't know with my natural mind and I'm fearful to say with my natural mind. In fact, in fact, the number one thing I think why people aren't witnessing uh, these days like they should, too many of the major denominations are not empowered. They don't have any power. If you think of the major denominations, Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, I can go on. No power. They don't believe in the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Overall, I'm not talking about some exception. Overall, they don't believe it. So Jesus said, he said, don't go out there trying to witness for me without any power, meaning you're going to have to have some power in your tongue. And I noticed that, that even now we're teaching witnessing class, right, on Sunday morning. The number one reason why people don't want to witness is they're afraid they don't know what to say. They're afraid they don't know how to answer people's questions. Come on now. Talk to yes, yes. Can I get an amen? amen? But I'm here to tell you that if you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, you have power. And we just found out that prophet to you old means power to be able to power from divine inspiration. You'll be able to uh, not only foretell, but foretell by a power that is not of you. That's why now, being filled with the Spirit, like what happened to us the other day when we went out to witness. When we went out to witness the other day, Sister Edda, the gifts of the Spirit started kicking in. In other words, God started giving us words of knowledge and words of wisdom. Things that we could not even have known. But they started operating. But it was because we were out there witnessing. So guess what? We're getting ready to start a witnessing class uh, next month in April. It's called Gifts, Callings, and Purpose. Uh, it's actually a gifts class. Gifts, Callings, and Purpose. So here's the point. If you really want to see your gifts operating, get to witnessing. Get out there on the witnessing field and they'll kick in. Because what happens is, particularly what's called the protectional and promotional gifts, the reason why a lot of people don't, don't operate in them is because they don't begin to operate until you are 
in an operation where you need them. Like, for example, it's starting to really make a lot of sense to me. Over the years, I always noticed how certain uh, protectional gifts would kick in when I was doing healing services or things like Sunday. We had a healing service and God was speaking some things to me. Uh, words of knowledge. And I was like, well, why doesn't this always happen? Because it doesn't, the Bible says they operate as the spirit wills. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So guess what? The spirit doesn't will for you to be operating in them when you're not trying to help somebody with the help that they need. When you're out there and you're trying, and like for example, if I'm out there and uh, like where we were on Saturday, we was in the we were right in on the front line, and there was all kind of we. As soon as we got out the car, we saw some people start fighting and stuff. We saw, saw some spirits going on. Oh, Sister Pat, we were like going, uh oh, we better get strapped. We better be ready because this. But but that's when the anointing starts to kick in, and you discern spirits, and you know what to say. If you got to cast some demons out, whatever you got to do, because why? Because because you're on the field now. You're on the battlefield and you got to use what you got. So, so what am I telling you? I'm telling you that in chapter 1, they were waiting on the power. In chapter 2, they got filled with the power. And what did the power target? The power targeted their tongue. It targeted their tongue. It caused their tongue to be able to speak in other languages so that the people at that time who were there from other nations could understand them. But more importantly, it targeted their tongue to empower them. Now, when I, when I say it empowered their tongue, listen to this. It empowered their tongue, but the tongue was like an outward sign of what it was really empowering, which is like it was empowering their heart. Because what it was doing is it was causing them to be bold. And the number one problem uh, for the church to not witness is fear. I want y'all to think about that for a second. Fear stops us from witnessing. What does the Bible say uh, cast out all fear? Perfect love cast out all fear. So it was like, and God is love, right? So when they got baptized with the Holy Ghost, here's a different way of thinking about this. They got overfilled with love to the point where now when they got ready to say something about Jesus, because remember he said, you shall receive power. Let, let, me, let me make sure we, I, I, I got to go there because this is very important because this is going to relate to chapter 3. Uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Let's go back there again. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Let's go back there again. Y'all there? Yeah. I want you to see something. This will, this, will, this will blow you away. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, or literally when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. Now let's Let's break that down. Let's exegete that for a moment. Power. What's the word for power right there? Dunamis. Dunamis. It literally, from the Greek, it means force. Specifically, it means miraculous power. Somebody say miraculous power. Now, you know what miraculous is. What is that? Supernatural. Somebody say supernatural power. So you're going to receive force, supernatural power, and then it says it means also, uh, or miraculous power, it means ability, abundance, meaning might or mightily, strength, violence, mighty work, wonderful, wonderful power, wonderful power, miraculous power, uh, abundant power. This is what he's saying. He says you're going to receive this power. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Now, now watch this. Then he says, so that you shall be witnesses unto me. Right? Let's look at this word, witness. The word witness there is martus. Martus. 
means a witness, literally, judicially, or figuratively. So if it's a judicial witness, it means somebody who, a witness is, is evidence, right? You bring witnesses in because they have a testimony, right? So they're evidence. They also have personal knowledge. See, the greatest thing you have when you go out to witness is personal knowledge. You may not have every chapter and verse, but you know Jesus. See, so, so, the, so what this power does is it's bringing out a boldness in your knowledge, abounding in the, in the knowledge and the love of Christ. It's, it's, it's causing you to maximize and overflow in the boldness of your, of your relationship, of your knowledge of who he is. You, you cannot be moved. So watch this. He says, Mark 2, it is a witness. Now, well, listen to this. This is really neat. By analogy, a martyr. By analogy, a martyr. Wow. Do you know what that means? Somebody who is willing to stand on their testimony in the face of death. Somebody who's willing to, if you want to take my life, I will not change my, this is my story and I'm sticking to it. You need power to be that kind of witness. This right, that verse right there is powerful. He's saying, what I'm getting ready to ask you to do, you can't do in your own strength. Because they're going to they're gonna try, they're going to try to kill you, threaten you, whatever. He said, and here we are as a church, gotten so weak, we worried about whether or not somebody rejects what we got to say. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't receive what I said. They rejected me. And Jesus said, I gave you power so that if they said they wanted to kill you, you would still stand. You, that's the kind of power I've given you so that if they said, and, and God forbid, but if we, you know, I know we're in the last days of the last days. If they start saying you can't say that name of Jesus, because that's what we get ready to see. When they say you don't you say that name anymore, and we about right there, huh? We about right there, aren't we? They already, huh? They're battling in Ontario right now. Well, you know, they've already it's gotten so bad. I mean, it used to be you could be anywhere, but now, you know, you say the name Jesus, it's, it's a problem. Right? And what God has said, I'll give you power to be a martus, to not be afraid, even in the face of death, of the name of Jesus. That's a far cry from where Peter was before us. Because you saw what happened was, because that's what he was afraid of. When they said, Do you know Jesus? Oh, no, no, Jesus, what do you know Jesus? Jesus, I don't know Jesus. Oh, you talking about hey, Susan down in the cell, the orders on the. Oh yeah, I know him. No, I don't know Jesus. They said, you know Jesus? I don't know that Jesus. Third for that, yeah, yeah. I don't know no blank, be blank. Jesus, start cussing. Start cussing. I don't know. I don't know Jesus. Why? No power. No power to overcome what? The fear of what? Fear of death. That that that's what it was. The fear of death. And Jesus died and conquered death, did he not? Yes. And yet here we are still fearing death. We should be fearing death. I, 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 I'm going to say that again. We should not fear death. <coughs> hey, why should we? I mean, we, we know. We already know. Remember one night we went through a this question I asked you all about whether or not we have eternal life now. Do you all remember that? Yes. And we found out the answer was what? Yes. Huh? Yes. We have it. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. So, so then when Paul said to live is Christ, to die is gain, mm -hmm. it's like you either believe that or you don't. I was actually looking at some of those scriptures uh, today again about that. I'm going to peek there and come back because it's just a good peek. But, but this don't help somebody. Let's turn to uh, turn to John. I want you to see this. John chapter 5. The reason, now, this is a good plug that Pastor has. 
for something, and you know, guess what it's a plug for? Anybody know? Who, you you get a gold star for the day. That's why I like you. That's why I love taking the field with you. It's the daily studying scriptures now. And you don't have to change up the whole thing. I told you, don't. Yeah, but it's, yeah. So 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 basically, no. It's, I'm going now. I'm going now. I, basically, I changed it. Instead of us reading a whole lot of scriptures, I decided instead of us reading a whole lot of scriptures, I said, slow down, slow down, and and you can study it, you can meditate on it, and you can reread it. Just think about it, cause stuff be coming too fast. You ain't getting it. So. I'm practicing what I preach. And this is where we are. In case you all don't know, everybody, you really should know. We're in John chapter 5. Yes. And as I was looking at this, God showed me some things. And I went and did some studies. In fact, I went off on a study that was really interesting. Uh, that is a very good witnessing tool. God really opened my eyes and showed me this. He said, when people are talking about they don't want to receive the Lord, this is a bomb drop on you don't have to receive Jesus if you don't want to. But I got news for you. The, the B-I-B-L-E, which is totally correct and has no error in it, says that he's the one that's going to judge you. Hmm. And so you don't have to receive him if you don't want to. But he's the one that's going to judge you. If you do yourself a favor and go through the scriptures and, and look at all these scriptures that tell you that Jesus, it's amazing, it says God has transfer judgment over to Jesus. That's, that, that makes a lot of sense to me because he's the litmus test for salvation. So if you don't receive him, that's who you're going to be judged by. So let's look at this. It says, uh, yeah, it says, look at this. Here's, I'm just giving you one tonight. John 5.22. Look at this. It says, for the Father judged no man but has committed all judgment unto the Son. Did you see that? Did you see that? He's committed all judgment unto the Son. Now, we came over here for this, but I'm, but I'm showing you that when you slow down, you read slow, God will speak to you. So I came here for this, John 5, 24. Very, very, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, Jesus is speaking, has, has, what? Everlasting life. Not will have. Has everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation. That ties back into verse 22. In other words, I'm going to stand before Jesus as a friend, not a foe. Shall not come into condemnation. Watch this. But he is passed from death unto life. Say, I've already been passed. I've already been passed. From death unto life. Death unto life. If you were with me when I taught at Love and Unity, I gave a graphic example of this. It was like a little mini play when I had some of y'all helping me. But to show that when he said, you've been translated from the, who was in that? Was Edna, were you in that play? You were in that play. Transferred from the powers of darkness over into the kingdom of his dear son. So you've already been passed. You've already been passed from death to life. You've already been transferred onto the other side. You're not waiting. You're waiting. Your spirit is waiting to leave this body. But you're not waiting to inherit eternal life. It was when, when I, I mean, I've known this for years, but when I saw, probably for about the third or fourth time, the movie The Perfect Stranger, and the guy who was playing Jesus told her, he said, the problem that people have is they mix, they, they confuse eternal life in heaven. It was like the light went on. It was true. He was absolutely right. See, heaven is where we're going, but eternal life is what we have right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say, I have eternal life right now. But I'm on my way to heaven. They, they, they're two different things. You, and the reason you have eternal life right now is because you have Jesus right now. He is eternal life. Did he say that? I am the way, the truth, and the what? The life. He meant eternal life. He is. And, and he said, just as my father, uh, look, verse 521, for as the father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. 
He's saying the Father has given me the same thing that he has. So Jesus it is eternal life. Now, if you study this out, if you study this out right here, John 5, 22, and I'm going to let you see how to do that really quickly. If you study this out and you went to, um, for example, you went to 522. 